Okay, so one of the biggest questions we get asked, uh, ProAct traders, is what's the safest trade if you're trading ProAct traders? And um, the safest trade is the wild card, and that is because the wild card is a continuation trade. In other words, a movement has already been established, and the wild card is just the momentum entering the market to continue that movement. Uh, nothing wrong with the six aces or the royal flush, except for the six aces is in a place where the market is transitioning. Okay, so uh, the wild card is the safest place to trade. Now, um, let me show you the absolute safest way to trade one. Okay, so I'm going to pull up the euro here, and um, I'm going to take everything off of here and show you how we do this. Uh, hold on, you can't do studies. You have to do all tools. Okay, there we go. All right. So when you pull up a chart, you've got the Euro USD right here, and it's on a 10-minute chart. Well, the first thing to do is get off of this chart and go up to a 60-minute chart. Okay, so we go up to a 60-minute chart, and when you see a bottom or a top is in place, then you will be able to uh, to know what to do here. Okay, so let's just take this this move down here as an example. So you can see we had a move down, and then we had a bear flag. If you don't know what a bear flag is, go to chartpatterns.com and learn about them. Okay, and then this is the the next high after this high right here. In other words, this is where it pulses up and it's over with, and now we're going to go down. So we use this high here, and we'll put the HSI on it. So we put the HSI, and all you have to do is find the yellow line there. You don't have to find the exact point, and you just put sell. Okay, and um, you do that, and um, um, that will give you the S1, the S2, the S3, on and on and on and on. Okay, so what you want to do here now is you want to go up to the support and resistance zone tool. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to block out the S1 and S2. And the reason we want to do that is because that's the most dangerous time to trade, a dangerous place to trade. The uh, currency, any currency, okay? The market has a hard time re getting itself out of the S1, S2. And you can see just exactly what I'm talking about. See how hard it was over here, okay? Just to prove it, let's go over and put the one on over here from the HSI here, okay? So we put this one on up here on this one. We'll put the HSI here. And, uh, you know, this one I just blast right on through here. See, so it doesn't have any problem here. And breaking the S2 is fine. And down she goes for, you know, 100 pips or so, okay? But uh, over in here, you can see that it's stalled out right here. And, um, uh, has a lot of trouble getting out of the S1, S2. So the real trade is the trade for, that when it breaks S2 and it goes to S3, S4, S5. And the reason for that is this is actually the very first place that bankers have any real reward for any risk. Up in this area, right up in here, there's not much reward for the risk that they've got to take. And so a lot of bankers will not make these trades in this area, but they will once it breaks through here. And you can see they know exactly where that line is. We've got it marked right on here, okay? So what you would be looking for is to make the trade after the breakout of the S1, S2, okay? And you can see you got a, a 60 minute wild card that occurs here. It actually occurs quite late. Uh, but we'll mark it right here. So there's a 60-minute wild card that tells you you now have permission to go to the 10-minute chart. And when you get out of the 10-minute chart, you can see very clearly these are the these are the candles. It was a wild card. They created that 60-minute wild card, and there would be you'd have entered right on this trade right here, and down you would go. Now that occurred at two o'clock in the morning, so you actually would not have been trading this breakout because it would be at the wrong time of day. But now it's two o'clock in the morning Central Time. That's three o'clock in the morning at New York time. So you would enter on the very next candle. You don't need another arrow or a painted candle. You've already got one over here. So once you know the 60 minutes in force, you enter on that very next candle. Now what you do, you know that if you've studied the tutorials, your first trade of the day at market open is 55 pips. Well, 3 o'clock in the morning Eastern Time, 2 o'clock Central is market open. So we'd use the PAP projector. We'd have, clicked, we'd have taken this candle right here. I'm just going to click on the body, not the wick. And you can see that it's a, I'm already preset up here for a minus 4. And actually it's a euro, so it's a minus 3 right here. That's the spread. 30 pip stop, 55 pip limit. When I click on it, 
My job is to stay into that limit. You can see exactly what that move did. 55 pips. There it is. See, so that would have been the great trade right there. It would have been another trade right here and another trade right here. These wouldn't have made you as much, but, uh, you know, you had three great trades right there. And the key was breaking out of this area right in here, okay? So uh, now we've had this run here, and now we're, we're, we're headed back up. So what do we do? Okay, we'll take this back off. Remove all the tools, and we start the process all over. We have a bottom in place right here. We see the move coming up, and then it settles out, and then it starts to go sideways. So we know that uh, it's you know p potentially going to move north. So we just simply put the HSI on the bottom here. We can go up to a 60-minute chart here, but this is going to look the same on a 60. And I'm just going to click on the bottom here. On this time, I'm a buyer, and it tells me that uh, my trade is up here. You can see it's stalled right at the R3, which is normal. All right. So we want to. We don't want to trade at the R1. R2. So we block it out so that we don't get tempted to trade. And we just put it right here and we'll mark this right here. So you can see this is an area that's not to be traded, okay? But we already have a wild card in effect. So as soon as it breaks out of here, we want to be in this trade and up we go, okay? So uh, there it is. You know, that's how it's done. Now, just to prove to you that this works, I'm going to show you because I've set up all the other charts here to just show you. We're just going to go around the horn here showing you how this would have worked had you have done that. Okay, so we'll start over here in the Canadian. Okay, so this is a, a chart that's going down. And remember I said it's very, very hard for it to get out of the R1, R2. And look how long it just tried and tried and tried to get out of there. When it finally broke out over here, though, there it is. Breaks out here. There's your trade straight down. See, by, by not getting caught up in here, you're going to you just wait for the wild card, and there she goes, right down there. All right, so there's the Canadian. Uh, let's take a look at the Australian dollar. Okay, down here is the R1, R2. You can see when you broke out here, I've marked the 60-minute wild card here. You immediately, uh, a couple of candles later, got a 10-minute wild card here. You got another 10-minute wild card here, and you got another 10-minute wild card here, right up to the targets, as you can see. Let's go down here to the New Zealand, see how that looks. This is the same thing. I blocked out the R1, R2. Here's where the 60-minute wild card occurs, and you get two great trades right on here for about 100 pips right there. And let's see. Let's go down over to the pound yen. The pound yen is going to scare you a little bit. Okay, there's the R1, R2. You see how much trouble it had once it broke? Once it breaks out of this little mess. And see, remember, it takes a lot to get out of this first problem area right here. But the break of the R2 is a very significant number. And up she goes. That goes up for about 350 pips right there. Okay, and we're looking at live charts here. So uh, here's the yen. All right, so uh, once again, here's where I've marked it. And you see, we got a uh, here's the 60 minute wild card occurs here. The next wild card we get on the break is right here, and that that chart goes you know considerably up there. I don't know how far that is, probably 200 pips, maybe a little less, 180. Okay, uh, let's go over here to the euro yen, and uh, once again, same kind of thing. See, once it broke here, if you'd have taken it here, you'd have got to get great trade. Comes back in here and it breaks again. Here's where we get our 60 minute wild card right here. So you would have made these trades right up in here. Uh, to the targets, you see, and this is why it's so safe. If you leave that R1, R2 alone, uh, the break of that is pretty significant. Here's the R1, R2 again on the Swiss franc. Here's a 60-minute wild card. You'd enter on the very next candle because you already had a wild card in place. You'd enter on that very next candle, and up she goes right to the R4. Notice how the HSI knows exactly, or pretty close to exactly, where the target is. Okay, So you can see, just based on that, that this is the safest way to trade. Let the rest of the world have the, the trades in the R1, R2. That's why we have a six aces. You can trade it in there, but that's why it requires so much confirmation to trade in the, in the desert which is uh, inside those um, two moving averages because you need a lot of confirmation to trade a currency that is in transition or is pulling back or whatever it happens to be. But the wild card is the safe trade, as you can see. Hope that helps you.